It's Pluto Day. Do you go to Twitter and Facebook for your news? You are not alone. And fake news moves the stock market. Mapmaker is back. Tech News Tonight is next. This is Twit. This is Tech News Tonight, episode 380 for Tuesday, July 14th, 2015. This episode of Tech News Tonight is brought to you by Braintree. If you're working on a mobile app and searching for a simple payment solution, check out Braintree. With one simple integration, you can offer your customers every way to pay. To learn more and for your first $50,000 in transactions fee-free, go to braintreepayments.com slash technight. Welcome, I am Megan Maroney. Let's get to today's big news. Happy Pluto Day. NASA's New Horizons spacecraft completed its flyby of Pluto today, but not before snapping some incredibly amazing photos of my favorite non-planet. The New Horizons has traveled more than nine years and over three billion miles, and this morning it came within 7,800 miles of the surface of Pluto. A new study conducted by Pew Research Center in association with the John S. and James L. Knight Foundation finds that more people are turning to Facebook and Twitter for information outside the realm of family and friends. Now, for a lot of people, that means news. And in the U.S., leading up to the 2016 presidential election, that's going to mean political news. Uh, joining us today to talk about this study is Jason Abruzzese, business reporter at Mashable. Jason covers media and the telecom industries and specifically focuses on how technology is changing these markets and what it means for us. Welcome, Jason. Thanks for having me. So what did this Pew study tell us that we don't already know? Well, it kind of just, uh, you know, proved what everybody kind of had felt, which is that Facebook and Twitter are really becoming important parts of the news ecosystem. I mean, Facebook, especially just by its sheer, sheer volume of people on it. Um, according to Pew, who's, you know, research is some of the most, you know, legitimate and, and you know, well thought out and, uh, you know, you know well researched out there. Uh, four out of every 10 Americans now get news uh, from Facebook. That's a mind-blowing number when you think about uh, Facebook being a single source. Uh, it's probably not as much as TV. TV still seems to be a place where the majority of, of Americans get their news. But even then, that's, you know, a variety of news channels. Facebook's just one source that, you know, everybody seems to be going to these days. So when they did this study last, uh, what they found was, you know, it's since they did the study, it's not that so many more people are using Facebook or Twitter. It's not like we're all flocking to places we haven't been before. It's just that we're using it for different reasons. We're not just finding out what our cousins um, ate for breakfast. We're really getting news um, from these sites. But, but we're getting it differently with Twitter and Facebook. Um, what are the different ways that people are using Twitter versus Facebook? Sure. Well, Facebook actually, interestingly enough, like people are much more prone to to post uh, about politics and to comment about political stories than they are to post about politics on Twitter. Uh, interestingly enough, however, Twitter is actually a place where people report seeing more uh, political news. So we're seeing some differences. There's a lot of places where they're very similar. Uh, you know, national news. You know, they found pretty similar uh, stats for uh, Facebook and Twitter users, um, but especially young people. Uh, are, are taking to these um, e these platforms even more than older people, uh, you know, seeing you know massive gains in the amount of of people under the age of thirty five who say that you know this is their primary news source now. So is it uh, why is it is it um, that these other news sources are failing us, um, or is it just way easier to use Facebook and Twitter for news, and we're just basically lazy? Why why are we getting more news from? Sure. I think, you know, one thing we've seen over the last couple of years that's very important is the rise of smartphones. Um, and on smartphones, people end up going through uh, social way more than they do on desktop to get their news. So naturally, people who are opening up their smartphone, going to Facebook, going to Twitter, you know, that's how they're getting their news. They're not going to a, a you know, necessarily a Mashable app or a CNN app or an NBC News app. They're really coming to us through these, uh, through these social, social apps. Uh, which, you know, when people are spending so much of their time and doing so much of their surfing on smartphones, tends to shift these things considerably in a short period of time. So they still are getting their news from Mashable or CNN or New York Times. Uh, they're not just hearing, you know, what their uncle Charlie said is the news. Uh, they're they're sure, getting it from sure. traditional no, yeah, sources. These, yeah, these are still funnels that, you know, you know people go to to explore news on other, other sites. However, uh, that's going to be interesting to see what happens in the future. Uh, particularly with things like Facebook instant articles, where Facebook is trying to keep people within the Facebook ecosystem by uh, encouraging uh, media outlets to publish articles directly onto Facebook. 
And Twitter's doing a similar thing with Project Lightning. They're going to create these little news hubs uh, when there's an event going on, right, that uh, you, you'll be able to go. I'm not sure exactly how it'll work, but I'll be able to go there and just, they want, mm -hmm. they're doing that so you stay there, right? And that's, and yeah, absolutely. And that's especially on mobile. I believe that's, like they announced that that's only going to be on mobile. And really what that's, that's going to be is a curated experience. So if, uh, let's say, something like Ferguson is happening or even the Grammys, you know, they said that, you know, it can be anything from, you know, celebrity events to breaking news. You can go to this channel and face or excuse me, Twitter is going to be, you know, grabbing assets from every media outlet there is to try to give you a, a full picture of what's going on. And we talk a lot about how, you know, the way Facebook works and the way Twitter works, where we get to choose uh, what, who we hear from. So we're kind of, you know, if we lean left or if we lean right, we're only hearing those stories. Um, but is that really, I mean, do you think that's really different than the way newspapers have worked for a long time, basically having a, a, a certain bias? I don't think it's terribly different. I think if you look at the history of newspapers through a lot of different cities, oftentimes they would have three or four newspapers representing a variety of different you know, political stances or so social stances, uh, we've seen that kind of move online. You have things like, uh, you know, Talking Points Memo or the Daily Cost that represent, you know, people more on the left. You have uh, Glenn Beck's Blaze Media or Breitbart that represent people more on the right. You're probably much more likely to have liked Breitbart on Facebook if you're conservative than you would, uh, you know, MSNBC. So we've seen people, you know, use this to kind of like self-filter out. And, and there's a lot of arguments right now over, you know, if this is a worse echo chamber than we had before. It does seem like people are able to kind of give themselves a little bit of that, like I said, personal echo chamber, put themselves in their own bubble. But it doesn't seem terribly different than, than the way media has operated for a long time. Yeah, I mean, I think one of the changes is, you know, the way Facebook worked in the past, that it was really based on what you liked. Uh, and so for a while, I think it was probably difficult for people, you know, if you, there was an article about people starving in Africa to say, I like that, you know, so that you would see less, see, see less tragedy. Uh, and for some, that's good. I mean, because, you know, the, the news is trying to uh, fill a lot of time and sometimes they do that with tragedy um, in order to sell sure. advertising. So, yeah, I, I don't know if it, is that different? But leading up to the election, this is definitely a different environment. Um, so how are politicians going to have to deal with this? I mean, it's going to be very interesting to see, you know, uh, you know, Pre President Barack Obama was lauded for his, his use of Facebook and his use of social media the first time around. Uh, it's going to be interesting to see what, what candidates are doing and who's learned what from that. Uh, I think we're going to see uh, really conservative candidates making a much harder charge. Uh, you know, there's a lot of consultant organizations out there that, that work on these particular problems that they'll be able to tap. And uh, even the advances in, in online advertising and targeting have uh, you know, really taken strides forward in the last you know, three or four years. And that's going to make a difference. You know, they're going to be able to, to target you with ads, especially on Facebook, uh, you know, down to you know, your zip code. And, and whether you're leaning left, you're leaning right, you know, things like that. Uh, Facebook's been shown to be very powerful when trying to target those kind of groups of people. So I think you know, we're going to see a lot more, uh, you know, savvy, you know, social media uh, presences and much more advertising. Right. I mean, I think what you talked about, what Obama was lauded for. I mean, I think that uh, that anyone running for president uh, in 2016 would be criticized for not already knowing that. You know, I mean, they it, what he did, you know, he knew what Facebook was, which was more than a lot of, you know, maybe the other candidates at that time. But now, I mean, they're expected to know a lot more. I mean, Hillary Clinton's been, you know, out talking against Uber and Airbnb. I mean, and it's become this political issue where the Republicans are fighting back. Uh, so, yeah, I think it will be really interesting to see. Mm. So the other story today, the big story is Reddit um, has been continued to be in the news for about a week uh, since the firing of Victoria Taylor, who was in charge of the Ask Me Anything uh, Reddits on the places where politicians and famous people could be asked any questions. Uh, so they're, they're still uh, in the news today. Chief Engineer Beth Bethane Blount, who came from Facebook, she told Recode that she just quit after two months at Reddit because she didn't think that she could deliver on the promises that were being made to the company. Um, so specifically about helping subreddit moderators and addressing harassment in the contents and comments. When we just briefly talked about this and what do you find interesting about this topic? Well, I mean, Reddit has always been a fascinating place and uh, you know, a lot of things going on underneath the hood that we probably didn't know about. And now we're starting to get an idea um, and also seeing just you know, how hard it is to figure out the future of this platform. Uh, you know, I, you know, Ellen Powell seemed to be brought in with the idea of, you know, taming what had become, you know, a very, you know, Wild West type place that, you know, embraced almost all types of, of thought and content uh, to try to figure out a way to make that a little friendlier, particularly to advertisers and encourage advertisers to be on the platform. It's a really difficult thing to do. You, you saw that, you know, even the slightest change or, or, or firing the wrong person 
can set off this entire community, and particularly the all-important moderators who kind of act as, as more or less volunteer employees uh, on, on the subreddits. Uh, you know, it's, it was a tinderbox just waiting to go up. Now we're seeing it, you know, basically on fire. Uh, it, you know, and going forward, you know, we're just going to see more changes. We've already seen changes uh, at the executive leadership. And now it looks like the next thing we're going to see is, is cha actually policy content changes coming up. Right. I mean, it's really interesting that you bring up um, these unpaid employees. Because we talk a lot about Uber and, the, the, you know, Uber drivers are not getting health insurance. But these people were not paid at all. They were just doing this because they wanted to. I mean, they weren't, you know, slave labor or anything. But, um, but you know, to, to really um, be building an advertising-based company on the backs of these people, uh, I mean, I don't know why they would be surprised that they would fight back like this. I mean, absolutely. And, and people who work on Reddit, particularly the moderators, are very protective of Reddit and, and the things that they like about it and, and, and kind of the lack of rules. But as that has progressed and the site has grown, that lack of rules has also become a bane to many moderators who, you know, uh, struggle to keep up with what's going on in their subreddit, would to struggle, you know, to keep up with just like maintaining a healthy site, uh, particularly if you're working in any sort of like social commentary area. Uh, we've seen, you know, race uh, race issues, particularly on that platform, uh, you know, crossover from subreddit to subreddit. We've seen harassment, things like that. We've seen called what's called brigading, which is when a bunch of people from one subreddit jump to another subreddit, basically try to like mess it up. And and uh, those are becomes some of that's illegal. So, you know, brigading is is you know not allowed, but it still happens, and it's an issue. And they've been trying to develop things to give moderators a little bit more uh, power to give them the tools to to do this better. But, uh, you know, anytime that there's these changes, anytime they try to introduce stuff, it, it you know, it inevitably meets backlash. Right. I mean, that's what before Ellen Powell resigned, she said, you know, we're going to give you better tools. Uh, we're going to, you know, have a better system in place. We heard you. We're sorry. Uh, but then these other people are leaving because they're saying you're promising that, but you, there's no way you're going to be able to do it. Yeah, I mean, there does not seem to be any faith among moderators in, in Reddit's leadership. And, and now they've brought back, uh, you know, I believe the first CEO, one of the co-founders, uh, to try to to you know handle this issue and, and figure out a way forward, uh, his statements so far seem to have only made things slightly worse. Uh, you know, he's kind of insinuated that there's going to be some some content rules coming up, and that's that's already kind of spooked some people. So I think on Thursday they're doing an AMA, and we're gonna we're gonna kind of get a look at some of these new rules. Uh, it seems to be an expectation that they're going to be targeted, at, particularly at hate speech, which uh, has been a problem on Reddit for a while. It is really interesting because like Twitter, it does seem like a lot of these executives kind of just go out there and, you know, just say stuff like as opposed to it being vetted and, you know, they have their talking points and, you know, it's it's like, t but then it's like, you know, it's buried in the, all these conversations. So they're not just, you know, sending out the crazy tweet that everybody sees. It's that you see the community and how they, you know, I don't believe you like you're, you know, you're wrong. There are direct responses uh -huh. to that. So it is really interesting. I will look forward to that AMA. Um, uh, which you said is going to happen on Thursday? I believe Thursday, yeah. yeah. Well, Jason, thank you so much. Jason Abruzzese is the reporter, business reporter at Mashable. He's at Jason Abruzzese. That's A-B-B-R-U-Z-Z-E-S-E -Z -Z -E -E on Twitter. Uh, and do you have a Reddit handle you like to give out? Not publicly. <laughs> okay. <laughs> we got to have some privacy, right? <laughs> Absolutely. Well, thank you, Jason. Take care. All right. Thanks a lot. And coming up, nerd performance art, Google cuts costs, and Amazon cuts prices. But first, this episode of Tech News Tonight is brought to you by Braintree. That's code for easy online payments. If you are building a mobile app or you're thinking of building a mobile app, you should definitely take a look at Braintree. Braintree is the payment solution used by companies like Uber, Airbnb, Hotel Tonight, Living Social, and Munchery. Braintree has made the payment experience in all of these apps seamless, and now you can add a similar experience to your own app. With excellent customer service and simple integration, Braintree gets you ready to receive payments quickly, and their continuous support plus fast payouts means you'll be prepared as your company grows from your first dollar to your billionth. Braintree is helping solve the problem of mobile cart abandonment by offering a best-in-class mobile checkout experience. You can check it out for yourself. Braintree gives a full-stack payment solution, support for all payment types that your customers might want. So start accepting PayPal or Apple Pay, Bitcoin, Venmo, cards, and more, all with a single integration across all platforms with superior fraud protection, customer service, and fast payouts. To learn more and for your first $50,000 in transaction fee-free, go to braintreepayments.com slash tech night.
Now, on to a few more stories we're following today. The New York Times reports that Twitter stock rose 8% today based on a fake news story. The story appeared on a site designed to look like Bloomberg and even included a Bloomberg News reporter in the byline. The story claimed that Twitter had received an offer to buy the company for $31 billion. It took about 10 minutes for investors to determine that they'd fallen for a hoax and the stock was back down to its original price. So although Google is not buying Twitter, they did release their own news today that made their stock go up 2%. The Wall Street Journal says that Google is cutting costs, curbing hiring, and taking a stricter approach to costs, especially for those without clear business objectives. This announcement comes just a few days before a Google earnings call this Thursday. In other Google news, PC Magazine pointed us to a post on the Google product forums announcing that the MapMaker feature will be reopened for editing in early August and it will be moderated. You might, might remember a few months ago that MapMaker had to be shut down in a that's why we can't have nice things huff after several inappropriate uses of the tool. Google says they're planning on relying solely on community moderators to police the tool since that worked so well for Reddit. Are you ready for Amazon Prime Day? That's tomorrow in an effort to get us all to buy lots more things we may or may not need. Amazon is creating an alternative to Black Friday where they will offer deals on Kindles, Chromebooks, Roombas, Bose headphones, and more. All you have to do is take advantage, to take advantage of these deals is to become a Prime member for $99 a year. I will put a link to the list of all the products Amazon says will be on sale tomorrow. That link will be in our show notes. And finally, did someone say nerd performance art? That's how the New York Times describes the print Wikipedia project, an art installment that attempts to envision what Wikipedia would look like if someone printed the whole thing out and bound it like a set of Encyclopedia Britannica. As someone who grew up in the days of the encyclopedia, I was fascinated by this. Artist Michael Mandeberg uploaded Wikipedia to the on-demand print website lulu.com and they're offering to sell the 7,600 volume set for a mere $500,000. Uh, you can also purchase individual volumes. May I suggest volume M for Megan Maroney? I am very interested in this. I would like to print it out. I, they had to use special code to get it up to Lulu. It's pretty amazing. And that is it for this edition of Tech News Tonight. Subscribe to the show at twit.tv slash TN2. Write to us at TN2 at twit.tv. Watch live every weekday at 4 p.m. Pacific. And don't miss our morning news program, Tech News Today, every weekday at 10 a.m. Pacific, 1 p.m. Eastern. And you can subscribe to both of those shows on iTunes. And we love it if you do, because then we raise higher in the iTunes list. More people see us and more people watch and listen. I am Megan Maroney. Thanks for watching. Bandwidth for Tech News Tonight is brought to you by Cashfly.com.